Hey, what's going on YouTube? While the rest of the gaming world is excited about the launch of the PlayStation 4, us PC gamers are indifferent and are finalizing our systems for Battlefield 4, but, or whatever PC game you play during this time of year, but I am going to turn off the lights so that you guys can see what's going on in my system. I did have a second PlayStation 4. I sold it on eBay for $600. It's still compelling for me to sell this PlayStation 4 for profit, but it's also compelling to keep this so that I can do more objective reviews of PC gaming versus console gaming, so I don't just get fanboys being like, Oh my gosh, you're just such a PC elitist. You don't even have a console. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. Console master race. But, um... You remember that PlayStation 4 controller unboxing video? All I got were kitties that were jealous that they weren't going to get their controller until Christmas and I got a lot of hate. People were like, oh my gosh, you're just such a Microsoft fanboy. All I said was I indicated I had a preference and I just got a lot of hate on that video. I thought it was, I mean, it's hilarious to read through those comments. Um, but... So leave in the comments of this leave in the comments of this video what you think I should do with this PlayStation 4. So I'm going to show you my clock speeds and my temperatures. So these are in-game temperatures and clock speeds. Come on camera, focus. Focus camera, damn it. Okay, so these are some in-game temperatures and clock speeds, 62 and 63 degrees on my graphics cards. And does that say, yes, 1462 megahertz in-game clock speed. I'm going to show you my MSI afterburner settings in an overlay. So performance-wise, I probably have a 15 to 20% overclock over my old overclock. I still have like 15 degrees to play with, but that 15 degrees can get out of hand very quickly. This is like, this clock speed is very razor, like it's a razor sharp line between, um, what is a crashable overclock versus what is a stable overclock. So I don't really want to push it anymore. Um, water cooling these GTX 780 Lightning Editions was never a matter of performance versus the 780 Ti. Getting a water cooled system was just an excuse for me to redo my water cooling loop that was kind of awkward before. If you watch some of my build logs before, you would know that my loop was kind of awkward, but I'm happy with how it turned out here. Now I can actually have a door to my reservoir pump complex. And sound wise, it sounds like 45 decibels if I uh, sit at my desk. So I can lace the reservoir pump complex with some sound dampening foam so the vibrations don't um, resonate through the front panel as much because it is really grinding up against the front panel a lot and those vibrations are causing the sound reverberation um what why am i why am i rambling do i sound like i'm rambling i'm just talking in a very long train of thoughts but this was how my system came out it's not as performance wise it's not going to beat a sli 780 ti build but, you know, again, that was never the point. It was just to get some GTX 780s underwater. And if I, the best value GTX 780, I feel, to put underwater is the GTX 780 Lightning Edition. It was like $520 on Newegg with a $15 rebate. And you got a lot of games with it that you could sell if you had extra copies. But these are my results. I'm happy with my current build. But remember to leave a comment on what you think I should do with this PlayStation 4. This is not going to be, uh, console gaming is not going to be a strong feature on my channel. I'm probably going to do like one video a month on console gaming. And I just want um, to be able to have a more objective, objective review standpoints on PC gaming versus console gaming. So um, the only thing I probably play on this is, I don't know, like COD Ghosts, Madden, and Killzone. So leave a comment. Thank you for watching. My name is David and I'll see you next video.